Hey guys, I was playing some Blitz games on chess.com and suddenly I was facing Ben Feingold. If you don't know him, Ben is a grandmaster, streamer, lecturer. He usually makes fun and instructive content. I highly recommend him. Well, we played two games. I won the first. We're gonna work with the first game. No one wants to see the other game. So. When I saw I was playing this master, my first thought was, well, this is great, what an honor to face Ben. He played d4, and uh, here I had my second thought. I said, I want this to be a great, entertaining, and dynamic game. So I will play England Gambit versus Ben Feingold. So I played here e5, he takes my pawn, and I played bishop c5. I was thinking of some interesting trick. He plays knight f3, I played d6, he takes the pawn, and then here I had my third thought, and this one was a regret thought. I said, well, uh, what am I doing? Of course, if I play knight e7, Ben is not going to take it. I mean, he's a GM, but not only that, he's always playing online, creating content. There is no way he takes the knight, and I decided to play c takes d6. Well, the whole point of knight e7 is that after pawn takes knight, I can just play bishop takes f2, deflecting the king, and then I can take the queen on d1. But, well, I didn't play it in the end, so I just took the pawn on d6, and here I thought, this is not looking good. I'm playing as black versus a GM, and with a pawn down since move number 2, I knew this was going to be a very tough game, however, resistance and survival in tough positions are also important chess skills. He plays knight c3, I played knight e7, we were developing some pieces in the next moves like e3, I castled bishop d3, knight c6, and then he castled, I played a6, knight e4, bishop goes to g4, pinning that knight on f3, and after a3 I traded, he takes back, I played knight e5, and then he goes queen g3. Now, this pawn on d6 is overloaded, protecting the minor pieces. He's threatening, for example, something like knight takes bishop and get the knight. For example, if I move my king away from this file, like king h8, he can take this bishop. If I take, I'm losing this knight. But also if I try to do a desperado, like trading the knight so I can take later, well, uh, he can just take back with his knight. And then he has a piece up here. So after queen g3, I just played knight 7 to g6 protecting my knight, putting a piece in the middle so my king is not so exposed. He plays a 4, I traded on d3, and then I played this move a little surprising. I just played here queen h4, and well, of course I have a pawn down, of course it's not good for me to trade queens here, but there was a problem. I'm here in the middle game, he's playing f5 and f6. The attack is very clear, and I thought it was going to be very dangerous, so I said I'd rather play the end game with a pawn down than this middle game with a very clear and strong attack. So queen h4 was played, queen takes queen, knight takes queen, he plays d4 attacking my bishop and I played rook f8 counter attacking his knight on e4, knight c3 moves his knight, I move my bishop and his knight goes now to d5 and this is another very interesting moment of the game i want to highlight that knight on d5 that's a great piece for white observe it is controlling many squares all over the board but also observe that i don't have a light squares bishop to get rid of the knight also i don't have a pawn on e or c to attack the knight and finally my rooks cannot go to c or e5 because the pawn is controlling those squares so even when the knight is not protected there on the 5 is actually safe. Also my knight cannot go, for example, from h4 to f6 in many moves, as there is a diagonal, it's going to take like 4 moves maybe to get f6, or probably a little more. So yeah, it's a really tough position, that knight is a great piece here on the 5 I just played here bishop a5, saving my bishop. He plays g4 and I take the open file. He continued b4 and my bishop has to go back to d8. This is not so bad. I mean, the bishop is controlling many squares, but 
He plays bishop d2, I played rook c2, taking the second rank. I'm getting some activity in the last moves. Here there's a trick. In the game he played bishop e1, but if he defends with the rook over the second rank, I can just get one piece up. I will say it right now. I can just play here rook takes bishop and knight f3 and get the rook. And I'm getting one piece here, but well, he didn't fall for that. Here we are already under time pressure. We are playing three minutes, no increment. He plays bishop e1, I gave a check, he goes back to h1, and I came back to e2. He traded on h4. This is probably a dubious move. Uh, rook f2 is much better, trying to get rid of my most active piece. Well, bishop takes h4 was played by Ben. I took the bishop on h4, and then he takes the open file. One more time, the plan rook g1, rook g2 to get rid of my rook on the 7th rank was the best. Well, rook c1, I take the pawn on a2, he takes the 7th rank, and here I was visualizing something very interesting for my next moves under time pressure. I played b6, and I thought, well, I have a pawn already on the queen side, I could be able to create a passed pawn over there, and if I can do that, it's going to be an important distraction for his pieces. Observe that white king is not safe here, I'm controlling the second rank, so if I can involve the other rook, I can create some problems. So the, this distraction on the queen side can help me do that. Also, this rook cannot move too much because it is protecting the back rank. And if it moves at some point, I could have some uh, checkmate over there. So actually, my tough position is improving a lot in the last moves. He plays here g5. I played a5, there's a trade on a6 and then a check, but this is not a problem, my king can just go to f8 and I'm totally fine here, I mean the knight cannot come to f6 and the rook cannot infiltrate over there, so this is more or less fine. He played rook g4, attacking my bishop, and here I saw something really interesting. I thought that if I could create a passed pawn on the queen side, the compensation is more than enough for a piece down. So I just played here a piece sacrifice, a takes b4, and well, in the game he takes the bishop, but that's actually a mistake. I'm going to be in a very good position after that move. This position is already even. The best move for white was knight takes pawn, but then I could have played rook b2, attacking the knight, the knight can come back, defending that pawn, but then there is another nice move, h5 again, bishop sacrifice, but the idea is that the rook is going to be out of play after it takes it. Here I can play rook a8, open file, many complications with the king over there. White needs to play rook c1, I play double rooks on the 7th rank, and the idea is that I'm getting draw by perpetual check on the 7th rank. Here white could try knight c3, and the idea is that they are protecting e2, so the king can hide on e1 and I couldn't have more checks, but well, I can still play check, check, and I don't have to continue with the checks. I can just play something like rook b2 here, and then I'm threatening rook h1. The only move for white is to come back, and then I still have perpetual after I give the check on g2. Well, instead of taking that pawn on b4, Ben took the bishop, and then after b3, this is going to be very complicated for white, observe, and playing b2, no one can stop it, but also b1 is going to be almost unstoppable, as I always have a check and b1 afterward. So he plays here, rook takes a6, and this is already decisive advantage for black here. I played b2, I'm promoting, he comes back to c3, and uh, well, uh, there is this capture, rook takes e3. Now I'm threatening the knight, I'm threatening rook check over here, so this is winning. Um, after rook h8 is not made, I can still go to g7. Well, um, white plays rook h7 here, but it is too late. Here it is black to move, black is winning. Try to find it. I will say it right now. In this position, black has some ways to win, but probably the best way is when we give checkmate in two by playing b1 promoting to queen, and when the knight takes, we can play rookie one and that's checkmate. I hope you have enjoyed this game against the great Ben Feingold. If you guys have any questions let me know in the comments. If you want to learn how to improve your calculation skills check out this interesting video. 
where you can find tips and the best calculation techniques. I'm sure you will enjoy it and it will help you a lot. Thank you so much guys, like, subscribe, see you on the next.